Coming up on today's show, the internet is outraged at the Tesla tent. The world's cheapest EV just got better. And which city is embracing EVs more than any other? We'll answer that question soon. But first of all, hello and welcome to the Monday, the 18th of June edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. This weekend marked a lot of TV watching for me, the 24 hour of Le Mans. I know, it's dirty and noisy and polluting, and each car takes about four tankers worth of fuel over 24 hours. That stat may not be be true. Uh, however, if there was an electric version of the series, of course, I would watch it instead. Now, apart from a few hours in the middle of the night, from about 1am to 7am, uh, I pretty much watched most of the racing. I know, a bit of a motorsport loser, right? But I, I love Le Mans, and well done to Toyota. Now, why am I talking to you about this? Because they won with the number eight car of Fernando Alonso, who won in a hybrid. That means 500 horsepower from the combustion engine, but 500 horsepower from the electric powertrain. Now, the electric powertrain gives it four-wheel drive, and that's a big advantage. The acceleration off the line, out of corners from the pit stops, just incredible with the electric power they've got from the high-powered lithium-ion battery. Can I find out on the internet how big Toyota's battery is? No. And I've been looking for a long time. However, it might, maybe it's a closely guarded secret. Wonderful electric power for that. And uh, fascinating, really interesting. Uh, the Toyota are going big on their hybrid power winning. Of course, Toyota of the company that have uh, bet their future on the kind of hybrid that you don't have to plug in. So I'm sure they'll go big on that side of it. But congratulations. Either way, congratulations uh, to Toyota for uh, firstly, finally winning Le Mans. Massively well-deserved after some heartache in previous years, but I won't bore you with that if you're not a motorsport fan. Now, the second hybrid I've been watching this weekend is on Fully Charged with Johnny Smith going for a very smooth ride in the Porsche Panamera 4 E hybrid. There is so much tech in this new Porsche, it is mind blowing. But what we're interested in is the battery tech. It's a 14.1 kilowatt hour battery in the Porsche Panamera 4E hybrid, the new version of that. Four hours to charge it on a 3.6 kilowatt and two and a half hours to charge it on a 7.2 kilowatt charger. This car is unashamedly a big, nasty petrol car, all about speed and noise. But uh, you know what I love? I love the fact that Fully Charged featured it. And I've seen 99% of comments, uh, as always, in favor of oh, just saying amazingly well shot. Oh my goodness, Johnny's amazing. And then there's been a few people going, I, I didn't want to watch a video about uh, a petrol car or a gas car. But you know what? These hybrids are going to be a stepping stone to so many people driving an electrified car to begin with. And then when they realize they can go up to 70 or 80 miles an hour on, on EV power alone, when they know how smooth it is and how quick it is, then the next car they buy will be a pure, a pure EV. It is quite a lot to ask someone to go full bev for the very next car they buy. So, I, I, you know, I think it's an amazing thing that Fully Charged featured what is, in effect, a big gas guzzler but is a very, very clever EV as well. I mean, and you know, and so they should. Well, let's get on to Tesla. And after reporting the news yesterday that Tesla have built a third General Assembly Model 3 line in just three weeks, holy moly, as Elon tweeted around the time I was recording the show last night. So we put the news into the show because it came up on my phone <laughs> as I was recording. And after that, I noticed, certainly uh, having slept on it, loads of comment online. Basically, the internet is furious about where this General Assembly line was built. A tent, namely. Okay, so it's not a tent how you and I are thinking about a tent in our minds right now. This is an enormous building, and it has a metal frame, and it has a canvas cover, but the easy criticism is to call it a tent. So there is so much faux outrage online right now about Tesla's tent. I'm just, I, do people not have a better life? What are they doing at the weekend apart from just going online? There was one account which is really anti Tesla, and I got a little bit kind of sucked into it by like, oh my God, just dude, cheer up. Like 30 tweets in a row. Uh, maybe he's just losing loads of money on their shares. I, 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 I didn't try and overthink it. Like 30 tweets in a row about, oh my God, I've zoomed in on this picture, and there's a bolt missing on the floor, and it. What? Come on, dude. you just sound like a like you're a nutcase. Like, you know, you look like you're forty, and your 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 picture on your 
Twitter, but you probably still live with your parents in their basement. Dude, get a girlfriend or a boyfriend and move out and get a life is what I want to say on Twitter. But of course, I never would. Uh, however, with Tesla, the thing that's really annoying at the moment is you've either got to have drunk the Kool-Aid and uh, Elon Musk is the saviour or you want to see them go bust and all of their cars slash buyers burning in hell. And of course, the truth is they make great cars. And yes, they'll make mistakes along the way because they're a young company and we need to hold them accountable for the things that they should be like safety and we'll do that in the right way as well and of course you can <laughs> be on the fence about tesla but if you try and go like see it online it just drives me absolutely mad so the internet is outraged at the tesla tent and another group of fans who are outraged at evs are a certain group of political class in the us and a new article out over the weekend was fascinating it's on think progress and i don't know if this is affiliated one way or the other i don't really care uh the problem is that typically people who feel like they should be against EVs, you know, the people who are buying EVs, uh, liberal, east and west coast living, snowflakes, buying electric cars, they're also really annoyed that electric cars are so much cheaper to run and that you can charge them if you want from solar panels on your house, which is the ultimate sign, really, of sticking it to big government when you want to keep control of your own life and you're not under the thumb of big power companies. Well, a new report says the US Department of Energy has just reported it's so much cheaper to drive an EV over any distance in any part of the US now compared to gasoline. The average fuel cost saving is 60% in reality. It's more like 80% for most people. As solar gets even cheaper and penetrates more of the market, many places will end up with a lot of excess low-cost carbon-free power during the day. So whatever your politics, whether it's the right or the left, it doesn't matter. Because for everybody, EVs make more sense. And driving an electric car, whatever your political persuasion, is just better. Well, the world's cheapest EV is considered to be the Chinese SAIC made, the Bujan E100. It would cost the equivalent of $7,300 if you could buy it in the US after subsidies, but alas, it's for Chinese buyers only. And now the Baojun E100 on a single charge can now do 200 kilometers. That's 50 miles more than before because it's recently been upgraded. Now, the new figure compares pretty well with things like the new Nissan Leaf and the uh, Hyundai Ionique and the BMW i3. However, not so fast. It's tiny. It's the size of a smart car. It's got two doors, top speed of 62 from a 40 horsepower motor. I don't think it'll be too long before we start to see more of these Chinese cars being sold outside of China. Well, let's talk about China then. And Shenzhen, once known for spewing out dark clouds of toxic smoke, has done so much to clean up and transform into China's most sustainable city, according to several research reports. In less than a decade, Shenzhen's reduced its average air pollution by 50%. That's according to a report on SCMP.com that I caught up with over the weekend. Shenzhen's made global headlines for being the first major city in the world to have an all-electric public bus fleet. In 2009, it was chosen as one of 13 Chinese cities to pilot a new, uh, new energy vehicle scheme. Today, they've got three times more electric buses than the entire fleet of the of all buses in New York, regardless of powertrain, and nearly eight times the total of Los Angeles. Uh, the e-bus fleet is not just good for air quality. It represents the city being at the forefront of green novelty, says this report. They continue, the city's electric taxi fleet is substantial as well. Standing by a crossing in central Shenzhen, you'd think about half of all taxis were from the BYD company, uh, the Shenzhen-based battery and EV maker in which Warren Buffett is a big investor. Well, the city's Transport Commission said at the end of last year, 62.5% of all taxis were now electric. The goal is to turn the taxi fleet electric soon too. All existing gas cars in the taxi fleet are on target to be replaced by 2020. Wowzers. And what can we learn from this? Well, out of the world's estimated 385,000 electric buses in total, 90% of them are in China. 
Every five weeks, and this was a stat that came up a couple of weeks ago, and I love it. Every five weeks, nine and a half brand new, nine and a half thousand brand new electric buses uh, take to the roads in China. That's the equivalent of the entire London bus fleet. Wow. According to Bloomberg, came up a couple of weeks ago. Only 1.6% of the city buses in Europe are electric. 0.5% of buses in the US are electric. And yet we see those big headlines. 10 new buses signed. 20 new bus contract uh, heading to XYZ City. We've got so much work to do. Well, finally, another Jaguar EV with a difference. And this is not about the iPace. Jaguar's battery-powered V20e boat just broke a maritime speed record, according to The Verge. Peter Dredge, the co-founder of Jaguar Vector, piloted this speedboat at speeds of up to 88.62 miles an hour across eight miles of somewhere called Coniston Water in Cumbria, in England. Uh, his speed broke the previous record of 76 miles an hour, which was set 10 years ago now. Now, the specifics of the battery and the motor and the controller are all being kept under wraps. Uh, but the team would say that they used the same hardware and tech that Jaguar uses in Formula E, the all-electric street racing series, and that technology coming from Williams Advanced Engineering. Of course, Williams famous for Formula One as well. I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to uh, see and read more about it and check out this sound for an electric powerboat. Well, that's our news done for today. A quick look at some of the comments that have been coming in over the last few hours, by the way. Hi to Steve, Steve EV on Twitter. Uh, says, after listening to shows like EV News Daily and uh, watching uh, YouTube shows like Fully Charged, he says this, the first weekend with our first EV. It's a Nissan Leaf 30 kilowatt hour. I'm enjoying every mile. Thank you to those whose resources and information have been invaluable in helping with the transition from ICE to to EV. And as for our YouTube channel, well, we were talking yesterday about what do you do? What's the etiquette? What do you do when somebody is in an EV parking space? Either this is not a nice car, by the way, um, not charging their EV, or their car is either fully charged or say like 95% and even 90%. That you know, that charge rate is going to be tapering down really quickly. Well, on YouTube, uh, user DC Various Vids said, if it happened to me, I would buy by a long cable and block them in whilst I charge. I would love to do that in my fantasy, right? In my fantasy head dream, I would do that. And I would never do it in reality in a million years because I would probably get punched in the face. Or also, it's just a <laughs> naff way to treat another human being. But wouldn't that be so good? A nice long cable and just block them in from behind. Well, if uh, someone was waiting, says this next user, and I'm not quite sure how to say your name on YouTube, uh, I-K-A-G-E-O-1. If someone was waiting, I would move to go into a regular space. And if a charge a charger is free, then I'd use it as much as I can. The thing about disabled bays, etc., uh, et makes sense as well. Um, what about people who need to charge who are also disabled? You know, which which one are they going to park in first? All very good points, and thank you so much for your comments and your contributions, uh, as always. And you can find us on our socials if you search for EV News Daily. If you want to take part in some of the conversations happening on there, uh, really interesting comments coming in. And a final one, where can I find this? This was a reply on Twitter. Here it is from Brian Weatherall, who we've mentioned recently on the podcast. Uh, Brian says, on the subject of icing and EVing, <laughs> which I don't know if that's a phrase getting evved, uh, disabled space users have been putting up with this for a lot longer than us. And hitting people in the wallet, he says, is the only way to change attitudes. They need to see their victims they never see their victims uh so they need to see the pain which they are being caused hit them in the wallet says brian i love it well you can listen to every previous episode of the podcast on itunes google play spotify youtube tune in stitcher and the blog at evnewsdaily.com if you want to subscribe it means you haven't got to think about downloading them every day it's a weight off your mind we're all busy it means you get them first and free and automatically and if you want to take a couple of minutes to rate and review I would really appreciate that. Uh, come and say hi on the socials. 
look for EV News Daily online. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you tomorrow.